Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new device from TP-Link. This is supposed to be a three-in-one device that has a VPN router, a switch, and the controller built in. The model number is the ER7212PC. It seems like this device is trying to compete with the Unify UDM base model, but the only thing that it's missing is the Wi-Fi functionality. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to take a closer look at the device. The TP-Link ER7212 PC features 12 gigabit ports. Eight of those ports are PoE Plus compliant. This router could have up to four WAN Ethernet ports, two of those being SFP cages and the other two being RJ45. This router has a small form factor at 8.9 inches by 5.2 by 1.4. Now that we've seen what the device looks like, let's get into the controller and do the initial setup. So if we go over to a web page, all we need to type in is the default IP, which is 192.168.0.1. And this is showing us that Amada is starting up and we should be able to put in our information shortly. Now we're on the landing page. It says, welcome to use Amada controller. Please follow the wizard to set up your controller and we'll get started. So now there's a couple things that we need to put in. We need to do an administrator name, an email, a password, confirm the password, and then we could do remote binding. So I'm gonna fill in this information. I'm gonna turn on cloud access, then we'll press next. For this setup, you don't need to enable the cloud access. I just find it easier to manage. So that's what I did. You can always access this on the local site. Now it says, how would you like to set up your controller? Config new setup or restore from a backup? We're gonna do it from a new setup. We need to give it a controller name. I'll call it Mac Telecom. We need to put in our region, which mine is Canada. And then we need to give it a time zone and I'm in Eastern Standard Time. They have a join user experience improvement program. We're not gonna do that. And then we're gonna press next. Now we need to set up and configure our site. So my site name will be Mac Telecom. This site is gonna be in Canada. It will be Eastern Standard Time again. And the username and password, this is for our devices or so our access points and our switches. I'm going to fill that in and we're just going to say that this is for an office and then press next. Now on this next page, if you had some devices that you want to bring into the controller, you can, or you could adopt them after. So we're just going to skip this. Step four is our WAN setting. So we're going to do the online detection interval as custom and then the custom time as 10 seconds. And I'm going to leave everything as is because I'm grabbing a dynamic IP. If you were doing static PPPoE, L2TP or PPTP, that's what you would have to change and then put in that information. It's asking us to configure a Wi-Fi SSID. We'll do that afterwards. I'm gonna press skip. And now our site is done. So I'm gonna press finish. Now we're at the login page for our site. We're gonna to have to put in our username and password and then log in. And this dashboard is new to me because I haven't worked with TP-Link Amada in quite a while and they've done a lot of different upgrades, especially to the dashboard. We could see the controller overview for cloud access is disabled. We would see all my sites, my gateways, my switches, and so on and so forth. Down below, this is going to tell us our different sites under the site list. We only have the one, which is Mac Telecom, and there's two alerts and we have one user. On the top, we have our organization, which does a global view, which will show us everything. If we hit the drop down, we could go to the site of Mac Telecom. Now this is the dashboard for the Mac Telecom site. At the top, we could see that it says no internet capacity, but we could change that by clicking the edit pencil. On here under the WAN, we could put in what our internet connection speeds are. Mine's gonna be 1000 by 1000. So if you've ever worked with TP-Link Amata, this will probably look pretty familiar. We have statistics map, devices, client, insight, log, and report. I do have an access point connected to here, so we need to get it adopted. We'll go over to devices. And we could see that this access point is pending adoption. We'll click on it and then we need to press adopt and this will bring it into the controller. Now our access point is into the controller. So we could create wired networks. We could create wireless networks. I'm not gonna go super in depth with that as I've already done other videos about it a few years ago. But if you'd like to see a full build, put it in the comments below so that I know there's enough interest. But what we are gonna do in this video, we will create a Wi-Fi network that uses PPSK. So that's private pre-shared key. And what that does, we'd have one SSID, but then we'd have multiple different passwords and those passwords would be associated with the different VLAN. So let's get that set up. The first thing we're gonna do is to create a couple networks. So we're gonna create wired networks and then we'll create the PPSK and then we'll create a Wi-Fi network for that. So I'm gonna click on settings. We're gonna go to wired networks and then we're gonna click on LAN. 
we're just going to create two different networks one will be vlan 15 and one will be vlan 30. so i'm going to create new lan i'll call this vlan 15. we're going to tag lan one that's where my access point is plugged into and if you had a switch plugged into here you'd need to tag that port as well so for the vlan i'm going to put it as vlan 15. The gateway subnet, I'm going to do 10.10.15.1 and then slash 24. And then we're going to update the DHCP range. From there, we're pretty much done and we could press save. Now we're going to create one more LAN and this is going to be VLAN 30. The same thing, the LAN 1 is tagged. That's where the wireless access point is plugged into. I'm going to give it VLAN 30 and we'll do 10.10.30.1 slash 24. Update the DHCP range and press save. Now our physical wired networks are created, we need to do the profile for the PPSK. So over on the left hand side, we have profiles. We could click on the drop down arrow and then we could see PPSK. Here we're going to want to create a new PPSK profile. I'm just going to call this YouTube test. And right here, PPs with earlier firmware versions only support up to 50 PPSK entries. And I believe we could only do this with their Wi Fi 6 access points. We can't do it with anything that's Wi Fi 6E. So now over on the right hand side, we need to add. So I'll click that button and we're just going to do this manually. The name I'll give it is VLAN 15. The passphrase, I'll just call it VLAN 15 and I'll do that twice. VLAN assignment will be 15 and then we're going to add a new PPSK for VLAN 30. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Call it VLAN 30. We'll give it a passphrase of VLAN 30 twice. And the assignment will be 30. Once that's done, we could keep adding PPSKs if we'd like, or we could just apply the changes, which I'm going to do. Now that the profile is created, we could create our wireless network. So we're going to click on our settings wheel, and then we're going to go to wireless networks, and then we'll click on WLAN and create new wireless network. Here, I'm going to call it YouTube test again. We're going to deselect 6 gigahertz as this doesn't work with Wi-Fi 6E. And then our security, we're going to have it PPSK without radius. You could attach your own radius server if you'd like. Now under the profile, we're going to have that YouTube test profile that we just completed in the previous step. And then we're going to apply the changes. And you can see that the wireless access point is configuring and we'll test out to see if these are working properly. I've disabled the ethernet adapter to this computer. Now let's enable the Wi-Fi. So if I click on my Wi-Fi and then hit the settings, we're going to see that we have this YouTube test down here. So I'm going to click on that and then we're going to press connect. Under here, this is going to determine which VLAN we go over based on that profile that we set up. So I'm going to type in VLAN 15 twice because that's the password I put. And then we're going to connect and this should put us on VLAN 15. So the YouTube test is now connected. Let's do an IP config and see where we're landing. And you can see that we're on 10.10.15.4. Now let's disconnect from the wireless and then we'll try it for VLAN 30 and see if it works. So again, I'm going to connect to YouTube test and then we're going to put in VLAN 30 as the password because that's what I did. And then we'll just take a look to make sure we spelt it right. And then we'll press next. All right, we're back up and connected. Let's do an IP config. And you can see that it's put us on VLAN 30 because we're getting a 10.10.30.2. So that's really cool. You could limit the amount of SSIDs in your environment and you could still put different people on different networks based on the passwords. So final thoughts on this three in one combo unit. I think it would be great for houses and very small businesses. It cost me $307 Canadian, which isn't a bad price point. Now there is a downfall with how many devices that we could have connected to the controller within this unit. So we could only have up to two switches and we could only have up to 10 access points. So if you need more than that, you'll have to go with a different unit. Let me know what you think of this TP-Link router three in one in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.